Good it was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. <laughs> How are you? Good, good, good. Long good. time no see. It's been a while. I feel like when I last saw you, I was so young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I'm getting old. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually in, in Tucson a lot. Really? My daughter goes to U of A. Oh, nice. She's That's awesome. That is awesome. So I bet that feels good as a dad, huh? Yeah. So I'll yeah. be back up here in like two weeks to move her back in. Dope. I love that. Congrats how's on that. How's everything been other than opening up your like 35th shop? You know, I'm just trying to catch up to you. <laughs> when I was young, I went to your shop and I'm like, damn, this is dope. You know, having a community of barbers in just one shop, being focused, wanting to educate themselves. Everybody showed up. It was late too, that class. I remember driving in, I think the class was at 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Yeah. and all your all your barbers are there ready to learn. So, so to touch on that a little bit, a lot of people don't know. So I didn't really know who you were until the Las Vegas Barber Expo. Mm -hmm. We went out there to compete as a shop and took nothing but L's. <laughs> hey, owls are always the best though, because hey, then you come it, back with those wins. It's true. It's motivating. Because the fact that we lost, and I heard them, you placed, and I heard them announce you, and they were like, yeah, Nicole Renee from Tucson, and I was like, oh, she's from Arizona? So the moment we landed, because we weren't enhancing or anything yeah. like that at the time, yeah. I was like, the moment we landed, I, I got on Instagram, I DM'd you, and I was like, come help us. Come yeah, help us. yeah, and everybody, I, it's different when you educate, you know, you go into a class and some don't really say nothing, some are not asking questions, but you're, all your barbers are like, what is this? What do I do here? What do I, and that's what, what, that's what it takes. So having a leader like you, you obviously pick the right barbers to be a part of your team, you know, and it's important. And I still tell people that do this day, even on Facebook and on like certain groups where I see like, hey, how can I do this? How can I do that? I say, hey, the, I think the best way is to, whoever you look up to on exactly. Instagram or whoever's in your area, get them up. Yeah. Pay them for your time. Yep. For their time. Invest. And, and get them to, mm -hmm. you know, put you on game. Yep. You know, yep. we needed it. And I mean, since then, we, we, you know, a couple of guys gone to competitions in place. But I mean, it's, that's just what I did. I, I, I looked up to you and I was like, yeah, we need to get in. Yeah, yeah. And, but look at that as a leader as, aspect, you know. But that was benefiting you in what way? To better your barbers. So, yeah. And not a lot of people do that for their barber shops. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I love that about you for sure. So for those of you that don't know, uh, that don't know you, you know, personally or whatnot, where are you from? So I was born and raised in Tucson, Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You went to school here and everything? Everything. Okay. Literally everything. I, I grew up on the same side of town. I still live on that side of town. So I'm very familiar for sure. Okay. What yeah. got you in the barber? Um, so it, it's pretty crazy. Um, it's a simple story about my little brother, but I was in the fifth grade and he would go to the salon and get haircuts and obviously salons don't do edge-ups and they don't do any of the extra stuff that men you know guys need for their hairlines so he'd come home with a bunch of hair on his forehead they wouldn't even touch it so it would bug me so much I would get my Gillette razor that I would shave my legs with my mom didn't know that at the time and I would just try to edge him up with it and that's kind of how it started and uh, one of the times that they wouldn't take him to the salon my dad would just buzz him so I was like can I do that and he's like yeah go for it and I I went on YouTube actually and I started looking up like taper videos fade yeah. videos and I was weirdly at fit on the fifth grade I knew what that was like I think now that I look back like my friends in kindergarten first grade second grade I remember them based off their haircuts yeah. so hair has always just been a thing I really enjoyed um, so I started cutting his hair started YouTubing it and I, I thought it was fun so then go, fast forward I wouldn't do it consistently I wish I did because imagine me being good in middle school cutting hair making money, money already but I didn't I didn't understand what consistency was back in the day so fast forward senior year I started taking it serious I started cutting my brother you know every week and then Instagram happened so I started posting his haircuts on Instagram and my friends in high school and senior year were like cut my hair and I was like I don't know if I know how to cut anyone other than my brother and one of my friends specifically was like cut my hair and if you mess up I'll have my barber fix it 
And I was like, cool. I was excited. So I, I pulled him up in my mom's front yard with like a little lamp and I cut his hair. And he went back to school and a lot of people ended up, you want me to pause it? Friend. So he, um, so he told me if, if you mess up, you know, I'll go back to my barber. It ended up being, it turned out great, you know, back then. Haircuts weren't out, all that like they are now. So my friends were like, or his friends were like, who cut your hair? Like, who did that? And he's like, dude, Nicole, like, she cuts hair, go. And I was like, dude, no, like, no, no. And mind you, I took like five hours to cut his hair. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And back then I was using Walmart clippers and I remember I started cutting, so I started cutting everybody um, for fun. I was charging like $5. And then it got to the point where it was everybody, like everyone's like, cut my hair, cut my hair. So I was like, damn, like for three hours of a haircut making $5, like I need to go up. So I went up to $10 and I started cutting everybody. And my first long shift was the night before prom. And I had did like 10 haircuts and I cut until like 3 a.m. Like it was crazy. I woke up the next day, I felt so sick. Like I didn't know what it was to work like that. You know what I mean? Especially taking three hours on each haircut. So I was like, damn, like this is tough. Like this is tough. So fast forward, I graduate and I was gonna go to college. Um, barbering was never a sense of a career. Um, back then, barbering wasn't cool like it was then. So it's not something you would ever think about. And I just thought it was a cool hobby and I really loved it. So I went to apply to Pima and I didn't get any grants. Um, my parents you know, made too much money and uh, they couldn't give me anything to help me get to that process to get it started. So um, my mom said, start barber school, get a job, then pay your way through college. And I was like, that's smart cool like I love cutting hair but the moment I started barber school it was a wrap like I I started barber school and I just doors started opening and I found love with it even more I saw what the industry was and I got my license in October and in November I competed in my first barber battle and I competed in two categories one of them I definitely just shit it on I did not do good at all but it was a fast fade and I brought a model that had hair for two months yeah. so in 15 minutes to transform somebody with two months of hair was not but then the other one was a haircut and beard and I got third place so I'm this young girl you know I think I was maybe 19 and I was like whoa like this adrenaline is crazy and then that moment like it, I was like this is what I this is what I want so I went hard for a whole year I competed all through the west coast um, I ended up getting like over 12 trophies 13 trophies in that year um, a lot of them were first place in fast fade which was crazy because that's the one I didn't do well in um, but that's something that I am if I something that I do is if I'm not good at it I obsess over trying to get good at it and because I didn't understand how to do a 15 minute haircut in a fast fade like competition I wanted to be able to do it so I started competing a lot in the fast fade and then a year goes by and you know I'm I'm already a fully booked barber it took me about less six months maybe more to become a fully booked barber um, and I was doing good you know I still had room to to obviously gain clientele but I was I was steady you know what I mean I was comfortable with where I was at and obviously I wanted more you know I wanted to be able to come in early and leave later and I I was obsessing over that feeling and then uh, babyless Jay Majors uh, DM me and I remember it was a day I wasn't working and I woke up at 8 a.m. to his message he was like call me when you can and I I'd never spoke to him before, but I knew who he was because he always hosted all the barber battles. Right. And I knew he was important. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, like, babyless? Like, I didn't know what he was asking for. And I wanted to stay humble and not call right away, even though I wanted to. I waited like three hours. And then I called him and he was like, we're looking for an educator on the West Coast, a female. Um, we're looking for somebody to represent the company. We're a growing company and, you know, we have a lot of goals and we want you to be a part of it. We want you to be an educator mind you I'm 19 like I was a kid in class that you tell me to read a sentence and I forget English like I was not one to speak in front of people and I was still like that and I was like oh my god like I really contemplated what to do like I I was a I was on the verge of saying no because I was so scared like I was like and he wanted me to fly out that same week to Florida to go train by myself I didn't even have an uber app I didn't know how I was never been on a plane before since I was a baby like it put me in the in the scariest situation ever but I took it and I'm here I'm here today you know so that's how it started and so I've been with babyless I'll be licensed for eight years in 
October, but with Babyliss, it'll, it'll be seven. So it, I didn't even know that. So a lot of your success actually came, came from, from them. Yep, came yep. From and it came, from yep. So me educating me, being in here in front of this camera right now, talking to you, it came from them pushing me to that point. Because I don't, I mean, who knows? I, I would hope I would have done it, but I don't know. Because they, I, I went trained and I started educating immediately. I started flying all around the U.S. by myself. So for about six years, I flew alone. Like, so I stayed in it. So now that you're cutting, you know, all the yeah. celebrities yeah. And, and, and you got your own Battleless Clipper, congratulations. Thank you, way, thank you. Big. I appreciate um, it. What's next for Nicole? That's always a tough question to answer. Because a year ago, I would have never said this was my next step. Opening up shops was never a thing I focused on doing. Crazy, believe it or not. So I always say, this is what I do. Um, my goal right now is to make sure that these shops are fully running, make sure my barbers are happy, make sure they're growing. And that's my goals right now, is to get this location going to where it needs to be, then I can focus on the next location, and hopefully grow from there. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. And that's good, because a lot of people have, you know, these 10, five year goals, and sometimes short term goals and short term success is all Things can happen overnight, you know, yeah. and I obviously I'm not thinking like, oh, in five years, oh, I'm gonna retire. Like, in reality, that's not, not gonna happen, you know? I love what I do. Um, I, I want, I have so much more that I wanna do. I, I mean, it, my mind is always going like what can I do next you know and I and when the new year comes like I can't not do something bigger than the last year I need to keep going you know and I never know what that is though but I just I stay focused on the the mindset of just keep working hard and the rest will start coming you know Me what too. I mean I, I try to stay growing and that's why you know the expo uh, I, I've, been, I've been trying to get here I've yeah. been trying to do this with yeah. you yeah. I'm like I, I'm blessed enough to have Nicole Renee in Arizona, yeah. And so I'm like, yeah. I gotta be able to get over there. Yes. You know, we've yep. known each other, but you're busy. I'm busy. We're entrepreneurs. We're doing our thing. And um, but again, I, I I'm, I'm I'm genuinely happy for you. Uh, when you got your Clippers, I was I was super stoked for you. Thank you. Um, I always tell the story about how you basically put us on. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's just it's a cool story because it was so long ago you know yeah. what I mean like I I was still growing my like obviously I'm still growing now but I was so so young like I was still had so much more to grow till I was here today you know so that's the cool part is is it doesn't matter I feel like a lot of people say ah, it's not my time yet like that is not don't say that you know what I mean because right now is your time like you don't know if you have tomorrow so make right now the time that you do it you know what I mean regardless of what the turnout whether it's gonna be you fail well you get up and do it again differently you know so and that's one thing I know about you because you didn't skip a beat you're like what do I need to do okay well now I'm gonna do it you know and that's a very important a lot of people slack that that self-confidence in, in doing that for themselves and I feel like they're people being around people like us yeah. that I mean obviously we have our insecurities you know we get nervous we get scared what if it doesn't work but I mean you won't know unless you do it <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I like the fact you know you're opening up your shops you're successful you're a girl and I say that because I have two daughters mm -hmm. one's 19 about to be 20 and she's going to U of A and I told her I'm headed to Tucson tomorrow and she's like for what I'm like to interview Nicole I, I'm excited about it I'm like she's like oh a girl barber and I'm like yeah. <laughs> not, not a girl barber she's like the barber <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know and she's like oh that's cool you know so I, I I showed her your page and I'm just like and that's one thing one of my biggest regrets was like not necessarily getting her license to be a barber but like not forcing her to like cut hair. try it out yeah like, yeah no matter what you yeah. do in life because she's studying to be a, a yeah, she, doctor, she can take like, it everywhere I'm yeah like, I should have forced her to cut yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah, And yep. then I was like, look, you, you could have been like Nicole over there in Tucson. Yeah, hair. yeah, literally. You know? Hey, she can be at the U of A cutting all her friends, yeah. making money. Yeah. It's fun. I love, I love it. But it's but just it that opening that door, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's all good. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm happy for you. I'm, I'm happy for all your success. I, you know, I think you're doing amazing. I, I mean, like, I can see the growth from just like three years ago. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, yep. having your own clipper and like I say, you're, you're just killing the game, so I'm just honored to be able to get this interview. Thank you, I appreciate and, that. And uh, I just continue to, you know, wish you the best and hope that you continue to grow. And yep. Grow and, and you turn this into maybe a franchise and yeah. get one of them. <laughs> <laughs> say less. Uh, I'm all say less. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll continue the conversation yep. at the expo. Okay, yep. Right. I'm excited for the expo. All right, we'll see you then. All right, thank you.